Hi everyone and welcome in. Well, can you believe it? We've made it to the end of this build. This is episode six of the T55 project and what a project it's been. We've gone from everything from the initial start of the construction through some photo etch, done some acrylic washes, and this episode we'll finish it all up, especially focusing on some oil paints. Strap in, let's get started. Well, like I said, this episode is really going to focus in on oil paints and working with oil paints to do the final finishing on this model. And pretty much all of this model, all the finishing, it's all going to be done with oils. There'll be a little bit of pigments towards the very end. And other than that, we'll let the oils do the work. The hardest thing in every model like this, or every new step anyway, is just how to get started. And with the oils, it's really no different, like where to start and how to get started. Well, the references give a big clue here. And so for weathering, for instance, I wanna take advantage of this reddish brown color that the earth in North Africa is showing. So I'll be using a light dust color as kind of my foundation, and then a sand color that will be representative of that dust color. And so I'll just get started here on the top of the hole, right in one of the corners to start adding some dust deposits just to kind of get myself warmed up. When doing this type of oil paint work, it's really important to remember to not use very much thinner, hardly any thinner at all. I'm mostly applying the oils directly from the palette with the brush onto the area that I want to have the colors affect the finish. And then I blend it away with a clean brush. And after a very short time, these effects accumulate, and it really doesn't take very long before you start to see how this finish is going to unfold. It's important to keep in mind that these paints, the oils, they're being applied to the surface and they're fairly dry. I'm not using very much thinner at all. And just with a few small dabs, I place the paint where it needs to go or would like it to go. And then I blend it away with a secondary brush that's clean and dry. Over the course of the next little bit here, I'm gonna work my way around the model, just kind of working counterclockwise in this case. Now, I've been looking forward to getting to this fender because there's a lot of really neat dents and dings and areas where I can add some nice effects. One aspect of using oils in this manner, that is where the oils are basically dry or I'm applying them basically dry, is that you can work a surface or an area and use multiple colors side by side without them bleeding or blending into each other and causing a mess. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm enhancing, say, the rust or even some of that primer color that's we scratched off through either the hairspray method of chipping or through the sponge chipping or added through sponge chipping. And then even right next to that, I might alter the base green color or maybe one of the camouflage colors. And I really have no fear that the colors will start running back and forth with each other and make a muddy mess. And what's really great about using oils over those methods we did earlier, say the hairspray chipping or the sponge chipping, is that the oils add a real depth of finish to the whole overall surface. This stowage box on the rear of the tank and also the fuel boxes on the other side on the other fender, I've been looking forward to those too because once again, we did some really nice chipping on those, through, especially the hairspray method. Those came out really good. They had a nice scuff pattern down to the primer color. So I'm just working to enhance that scuffing and at the same time, I can add those dirt and dust effects, again, using a light dust kind of as my primary base color, and then the sand color over the top of that just to give some more heavier accumulated effects. On this rear engine deck, I really wanted to kind of portray some heavier, dustier effects, you know, the accumulation of all this dust just kind of laying on the surface there over time. And so in this case, rather than using just a real dry oil paint, I've added quite a bit of thinner to these and I allow the, the oils to kind of move across the surface and accumulate in the corners and stuff. Kind of a light wash, if you will, but this really creates a nice dusty effect. And on that, once that dries, you can continue to add more colors and build up the opacity. And then once I got done with that stage, I kind of still felt like it was lacking a little bit of punch. I felt like there just needed to be a little bit more definition or grittiness or grime on this rear deck. So I just mixed up a little bit of a wash using a sepia color oil paint with thinner, put it in a little cup, and just did some traditional pin washing. Of course, speckling is part of this process as well, but I've been doing this all along. I just haven't had it on camera. 
In earlier stages, I would have speckled, say, the green over the green and the reds over the reds. In this case, a little bit of the dust tones over that engine deck just to give a little bit more depth to that dusty finish that I was looking for. And any spots that are too big or out of place, they can just be blended away with a brush with a little bit of clean thinner. All in all, I spent maybe about two days of oil work on the lower hull there. And so it was a good time just to kind of set it aside and let everything dry out nicely. It's probably maybe 80% done and turn my attention to the turret. In terms of the techniques and the process, it's all very much the same, using the same colors and the, basically the same techniques of applying oils. The only real difference here is that I'm gonna leave the turret just a little bit cleaner not quite so many dust effects, not make it quite so grimy, because, you know, it gets polished off a little bit by the crew getting on and off and wiping it off with their trousers. And so with less, say, environmental or dirt effects, that gives me the opportunity to change and shift some of the tones of, say, the greens and fade them out a little bit more just to give some visual interest. And, of course, in every build, there's that time where everything has to start coming together. And so in this case, that's what you're seeing here. The tracks are on, the wheels are on, the side skirts are on. And so now it's time to start focusing on some of the finer details of the finishing. One of the hallmarks of the T-55, or maybe it's just a cliche, but anyway, generally there's some staining that happens right around the exhaust of the T-55s. And that's what I'm going to start working on here. And so I load up my brush with some darker browns, some darker grays, and even a little bit of ochre and reddish tones. However, as much as I tried to get the effect that I was looking for with just using oils alone, I just couldn't quite get there. What I'm looking for is that appearance of dirt and grease all mixed together, that stained look. And so in order to do that, I went ahead and mixed up a pigment color that was really close in tone to the, the sand color, the oils that I've been using. And then I just lightly dusted that area with some dry pigments. And then over the dry pigments, I just went ahead and added back in some of those oil colors. And that just stains the pigments and gives that stained effect that I was looking for. Well, speaking of pigments, my intention for this project all along was to take oils as far as I possibly could and use pigments in a more limited fashion. But there are certain areas that pigments just do the job that nothing else really can. And those are especially on the tracks. And so in this lid, I've already got a little bit of odorless thinner sitting in the bottom here. And to that, I've added the two colors of pigments that I've been using to make that sand tone. I have been using pigments, I call it dissolved, but wet, mixed with thinners, for years. Over the years, I have just come to almost exclusively apply my pigments wet or dissolved in thinners like this and apply it with the brush. It's just an easy, precise, and relatively clean way of adding pigments especially the places like tracks, but even other places, because you can literally just paint the pigments in the corners or in spaces that you would like them to be. And the other area that I wanted a little bit more grit and surface texture was on the rear of the vehicle here where the dust and dirt would have accumulated. So again, using the pigments wet and a brush, I'm just kind of dabbing it around, especially some of the fittings, just places where the dirt would accumulate. Well, we must be getting close to being finished here because this is really one of the very last steps. And that is just to add a little bit of a metallic sheen or shine to some of the exposed edges. On this model, I got a little bit lazy. Often I'll use a little bit of pigment, say on a Q-tip, but in this case, I just went ahead and used a pencil and I'm just kind of buffing the pencil lead across some of these surfaces, especially like around the hatches and exposed corners, just to give it a little bit of a metallic sheen. The same was done on the turret as well, just using the pencil to add a little bit of polish to some of the high traffic areas. And of course, that's the key to the successful use of any of these techniques, and that is applying them in a logical manner where it makes sense and how they might occur in real life. If we can do that, then we will have great looking models. Sometimes easier said than done, but that's the goal anyway. And so with that, I think we're finished with the T-55 from the African Union. If you have been with me through this entire series, I really appreciate that and a big thank you to you. I'll put some links below for the rest of the videos in this series and my other videos, so please check them out and hit those subscribe and like buttons. And here we are with the final photographs, and well, look at this. I went ahead and got myself one of those little spinning platforms to show off my model in the final sequence. Yeah. I guess this makes me a real live, official video guy now.
So again, the T55 is complete. I have another project in the works, and hopefully I will have that out, at least the first episode, in the next week or so. So Tuesdays are generally my days that I put out new videos. Again, thank you for following along. Hit that like and subscribe, and there'll be links in the comments below. Take care, everyone, and have a good time. Happy modeling.